Good morning, students. Hey, this is Mr. Lively coming to you, and today we're going to be talking about European exploration and settlement. I want to go through this really quick, but remember, even though I'm talking fast, you can always pause it, back up, listen to it again, and then keep on going. You are going to have a set of questions that you're going to have to go and answer at the end of this, and those questions will be on quiz is. The link will be in the assignment. All right, so pay attention. Let's go. Standards. We're going to be talking about the impact of the European exploration and settlement on American Indians in Georgia. And so the main question is, why would we explore? Why would people decide to leave Europe, leave their comfortable homes, and then come all the way over here to some place they'd never been before to meet people they didn't know anything about? So it was called the Age of Exploration. Life in Europe changed dramatically from 1450 to 1700. New inventions and ideas led to the Age of Exploration. Once the New World was discovered, Spain, Great Britain, and other European nations began to compete to claim as much territory as possible. So it was kind of the thing you just did, okay? So if you were wanting to show that you had the greatest kingdom, the greatest country, you had to go out and do stuff, all right? You had to go and explore new places. You had to go look for new lands. Basically, lots of times you were looking for natural resources. Here we see an old map. We see what the ships kind of look like. Let's talk about Spain. Exploration of the New World brought great wealth to Spain. By the 1500s, the Spanish had established numerous settlements from Florida to Georgia. Spain had three main interests in the New World. Those are God, gold, and glory. Those are what we call the three G's, guys. And you're going to hear those over and over and over again. Okay? You're going to hear about them from Spain, from Great Britain, from Portugal. All right? All the great countries. Those are the things they were trying to do. So what do we mean by God, gold, and glory? Here we see Christopher Columbus coming over on his ship. These are all the different places they sailed to and all the different ways they went. So let's start off talking about God. During this time period, the predominant or the main religion in Europe was Christianity, in particular Catholicism. Lots and lots of Catholics. Catholic Church was the big church, especially going all the way up until the early 1500s. Okay, If you were a Christian, more than likely you were Catholic. It was the number one main church. European rulers wanted to spread their religion to other parts of the world. It's one of the great, that's one of the, what we call the Great Commission. If you're a Christian, you've heard of the Great Commission, go out into the world and, and make disciples. Okay? One of Spain's top priorities with exploration was to convert non-Christians to Christianity. Here we see this, uh, this painting of Christopher Columbus coming on shore. If you'll notice, Christopher Columbus, he's kneeling down, has his sword out. He has one of the uh, priests there with him, giving it the blessing. People are bowed down. The flags are dipped down. This is a prime example of the God portion of it. Over here, you see the natives kind of scared, not really knowing what to make of this whole spectacle. The Spanish considered the American Indians in the New World to be uncivilized. They wanted to teach the natives the Christian faith and convert them to Catholicism. Gold is the next one. What do we mean by gold? Simple. They wanted to be rich. Many of Europe's explorations for economic reasons. Europeans knew that they could make a lot of money as traders if they could get Asian goods for a cheaper price. So that's one reason why Christopher Columbus set off to sail that way, is he set off to go that way so he wouldn't have to pay the Ottomans, right? The Ottoman Empire kind of controlled all the trade routes right there, would not have to pay the Ottomans, would not have to sail all the way around Africa. So, hey, let's just go the opposite direction and see where we wind up. He wound up hitting the West Indies and, and uh, South America. Europeans knew that they could make a lot of money 
Okay, so cheaper price. So Spanish explorers also desired to find gold and other riches in the new world. The glory of it all. Who doesn't want to be famous? Don't you want to be famous? During this time period, Europeans believed that a country's glory was based on the size of its empire. European nations raced to gain new lands in order to be the greatest empire in the world. Spanish explorers were going to were willing to risk dangerous voyages in order to claim new lands. Brings us to Great Britain. Great Britain began exploring the new world in the late 15th century. That means the 1600s. Great Britain planned to settle and occupy the new land in order to cement its claim on the area. The nation's interest in the new world included glory, mercantilism, okay, Opportunity, and of course, God. John Cabot. So the John Cabot flag, he had his own flag, it kind of looked like this, and he set sail. The glory of it all. Like other European countries, Great Britain was in competition to establish the largest empire around the world. Great Britain saw how much Spain was benefiting from its conquest in the New World and did not want to miss out. Mercantilism. Now, this is where Great Britain differs from the other European countries. What you see from Spain is, is the conquistadors, they come over, they get into Central and South America, and they just basically take everything. Okay, They take all the gold, they enslave the people, uh, they take over, establish their own uh, empire there. Great Britain, they did a little bit different. Their goal was for mercantilism, was to export more goods to foreign countries than it imported. In order to do this, Great Britain needed more resources than it had available. British explorers hoped to find raw materials that they could use to manufacture goods in their own country. So they were coming over looking for cotton, Okay, places to grow cotton, places to grow silk. You'll find out later on. That's one of the reasons why Georgia was founded, is as a colony for to grow silk. And that's what they were trying to do. Also, they wanted these colonies to buy from them. So you grow the stuff, send the stuff back to Great Britain, and then you have to buy the finished product back from us. Opportunity. During this time period, Great Britain had a huge number of poor and unemployed people. Lots of people, very uneducated, very unskilled. You either had to be a farmer, you had to be working a, in a mine, or have to have some sort of very hard labor. A lot of this, there just wasn't, there were too many people and not enough jobs. This lower class of people needed a place to go for new opportunities. Many of Great Britain's citizens saw the new world as a chance for a new start and a life where they could own land and maybe even get rich working on it. God. Again, here comes God. The Church of England. Okay, so we had a split. We had a split in the Catholic Church. And from that split, we get the Church of England. Uh, it was very powerful and punished anyone who spoke out against it. Some religious groups in Great Britain did not agree with that and wanted freedom to worship in their own way. These groups, including the Pilgrims and Puritans, saw the New World as an opportunity to escape religious persecution. Spanish contact on American Indians. This is where it gets rough, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. Spain arrives. Spanish explorers and missionaries entered Georgia in the early 1500s. We know DeSoto gets here in the 1540s. European contact made a dramatic impact on the American Indians. European missionaries attempted to convert the natives to their religion. So take the natives, take them away from their own belief systems and their own traditions and convert them to Catholicism. They also brought diseases that wiped out a large portion of the native population. So if you think coronavirus is bad, okay, imagine smallpox coming in and smallpox wipes out 90% of your village. Nine out of 10 people that you know are dead. 
1540, Spanish conquistador named Hernando de Soto led 600 soldiers across Georgia. De Soto was searching for cities of gold. De Soto's men tortured and enslaved the natives in order to gain information about gold in several locations. He never found the gold, but he did leave a lasting impact on the American Indians in Georgia. Basically, they learned to not trust the Europeans that were coming in. Up to this point, uh, most of the settlement had been in Central and South America and there on the islands. Not a lot had moved inland. Like I said, DeSoto was the first one to uh, uh, enter Georgia and he came up through South Georgia, entered basically near where uh, Bainbridge, Georgia is today and worked his way up. The Indians weren't dumb. He comes in and he tells him, hey, I'm looking for gold. I hear you guys got gold. They said, oh, no, you're mistaken. We don't have any gold. It's these other people up there. They're the ones who have the gold. So here, here's what he looks like. So imagine coming to Georgia, June, July, August, and you're wearing a suit of armor. It was still getting hot back then, too, guys. Same temperature, same weather. Nothing's changed. So here's where he comes in. He comes in through Florida, comes up through here, comes right up through there. Okay. Basically, right there, he is following this right. This right here, it marks the uh, Chattahoochee River. Chattahoochee River turns into the Appalachia Kohler River that comes down through here. And then he comes up following this river here. Okay. And the Indians... As he marches his way through, they keep telling him, we don't have any gold. It's further up north. It's further up north. You want to keep moving. Keep moving up there. That's where all the gold is. And he gets about to right here, and then he makes a right turn. Goes into what we would call South Carolina nowadays. This right here, where he crosses over, that's the Savannah River. Savannah River comes right down through here. So he crosses over the Savannah River, about where Augusta is today. Goes into South Carolina, parts of North Carolina, comes around, comes back down. Look right there, guys. That's the Coosa River. He comes right through where we live. DeSoto comes right through where we live right now. He spends, he makes a camp in Rome, Georgia. He spends an extended period of time in Rome, Georgia, dealing with the Indians in Rome, the Coosa Indians in Rome. So he spent a lot of time around in this area. He crosses over to what now what we call Alabama, finds a great huge waterfall, okay? And those waterfalls are named after him today, DeSoto Falls. You can go and visit them. They're beautiful and wonderful. Disease. Smallpox. Disease is what kills about, like I said, 90% of the Native Americans who were here. DeSoto and other Spanish explorers brought horrible diseases that devastated the American Indian population. Some of the diseases included smallpox, influenza, influenza as, as the flu, measles, and even chickenpox because the Native Americans had no immunity to chickenpox whatsoever it would kill them. You and I, we have immunity to it, so even though it might make us sick, it won't kill us. The natives had no resistance to the disease and entire villages were wiped out at a time. The Barrier Islands. The Barrier Islands are the set of islands located off the coast of Georgia. They're on the Atlantic uh, Ocean. In 1565, the Spanish established St. Augustine, which is in Florida as their first permanent settlement. St. Augustine is the oldest city to be established in North America, what we call North America. Before that, you've got Mexico City and other places like that. Before we call the United States, you've got St. Augustine. Then they moved north to establish a post off of Georgia's coast on St. Catherine's Island. Over time, the Spanish traveled to some of Georgia's other barrier islands, such as St. Simons, Cumberland, Sapelo, and established more posts. Ms. Quintana, please call the front office. Ms. Quintana, please call the front office. Here is a map showing the locations of the different places. 
those, these names out here, the Mokama and the Gwali, that's the names of the areas that the natives called these. So here's the St. Mary's River. St. Mary's River is what makes the border even today between Georgia and Florida. So you can see right up through here. Lots of different places that were set up by the Spanish very, very early before anybody else was here. And the Native Americans were here, but before any other Europeans were here, the Spanish were here first. Always keep that in mind. The Spanish were here first. First Europeans. The Spanish established missions. Those are churches in all of these places with the goal of converting American Indians to the Catholic religion. As the Spanish influence grew, more and more American Indians adopted the new religion. Many American Indians to continued to practice, practice Catholicism even after the Spanish abandoned the area. Here's an example. Here's a historical marker. The American Indians. As the Europeans competed for land in the Americas, they had little regard for American Indians living in the area. What does that mean? Simply means they just didn't care about them. They didn't care that their disease was coming in and killing them off. They didn't care uh, that they were dis disrupting their whole way of life and their culture. They were coming in to take over. Many nat natives were enslaved or killed either through war or through disease. The Europeans were only interested in the American Indians for trading, land deals, and military alliance. Show some of the fighting that went on. Conflict in the Southeast. By the 1600s, Spain and Great Britain had settlements in the southeastern region of North America. Both wanted control of the area. 1663, England's King Charles II declared a new English colony called Carolina, which overlapped Spain's territory and the region. After seeing the success of this colony, the British desired to take control of the Spanish territories in what would later be known as Georgia. In order to remove Spain from the southeast, British colonists began to make allies or friends, make an alliance, an agreement with many of the American Indian tribes in the region. After arming the American Indians with firearms, the British led them on an attack of a Spanish mission in Georgia in 1680. The Spanish defended the mission this time, but over the next few years, they abandoned the missions and retreated to their Florida forts for fear of future attacks. So even though the first attack wasn't successful, the attacks kept occurring and kept happening, and eventually the Spanish were like, this just isn't worth it. We're moving back south. Control. British and American Indian raids had successfully pushed the Spanish out of Georgia. Spain was not quite ready to give up its claim to the southeast, so the stage was set for future conflicts with Great Britain. Neither country wanted to give up the resources or profits made in North America. Here's one, year, uh, one of your assignments, okay? So here's what I want you to do. I'll give this to you in a uh, Google slide. I think that'd probably be the best way for you guys to answer this. I'll give this to you. This will be in your uh, on your Google assignment, Google Classroom assignment there, along with the questions. So this is the Explorer job application. So you think you want to be an explorer? So tell me your age, position, your or applicant. That's your name. Age, position you are applying for, and you got to answer these questions. Do you like taking risk? Describe the biggest adventure that you've been on. Are you interested in making a lot of money? What would you do with a chest full of gold? What is your religious preference? How do you feel about forcing others to convert to your religion? Would you like to be famous? What would you do with the fame and glory? And then over here on the right side is uh, an area where I want you to kind of draw yourself or insert a picture of you doing something adventurous. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Hope this helps. If you have any questions, uh, just shoot me an email 
or like I said, you can always go back and replay this at any time, re-listen to it. You are going to have some questions that you have to answer on quizzes. Again, that link will also be in Google Classroom for your assignment. See you later, guys. Bye.